Craft Tech has been actually in Cleveland 125 years. We were founded in Lakewood in 1886, so this year is our 125th anniversary, which we will celebrate later in the year. Um, we're a global company, about a billion dollars in sales, have been over a billion dollars uh, a couple of years ago, and um, uh, about that size. Very much a global company. This is our head office and our R&D center for Holograph Tech Worldwide. But we have facilities in Lakewood, Ohio. That's the longest and oldest one. But also in West Virginia, in Tennessee, in Mexico, Brazil, South Africa, Italy, Spain, France. Um, servicing 70 um, uh, countries, global sales all around the world, wide range of markets. We make graphite. Uh, graphite is a material that's used in a lot of high temperature and industrial processing kind of applications. So the big one for us, the big bread and butter business for us is steel making. Uh, you're melting scrapped steel to remake it into good steel. And today more than half of the US's steel is made that way. It's a recycling process to recycle scrap steel. And about a third of the world's steel. And as countries become more developed, that proportion increases. So we sell to steel makers in China and Japan and India and Asia and obviously in the US where steel is still very big. We also make graphite for a wide range of other applications and increasingly today finding more and more applications. For example, solar is very big for us. You really can't make the silicon that goes into those things you see on people's houses and on, on roofs of buildings without graphite involved in the process. It's a high temperature material that's used to melt the silicon and or cast the silicon into to make it into the crystalline ingots that they then cut up to, to turn into solar applications. Today we're increasingly excited about advanced energy applications, uh, meaning things like fuel cells, uh, we make graphite that goes into fuel cells, and I'll, I'll show you a couple of products in a minute. Um, Lithium-ion batteries, uh, vanadium redox batteries, these are all energy storage type technologies that we're increasingly going to need. Um, and then today a lot into electronic applications. But then there's another technology, and that's the one we practice right here in Lakewood, Ohio, which is natural graphite. And as it suggests, natural graphite is a natural material mined out of the ground. Uh, there's vast deposits of this all around the world. We, we don't do the mining, we buy the, the processed material. But what we do is we turn it into a thin film flexible graphite in our Lakewood, Ohio facility. Uh, the beauty of this material, uh, it, it has a number of attributes. One, it's a, a naturally deri derived material. We haven't added anything to this at this point. We've just r really reconfigured it, restructured it. As you can see here, it's flexible, uh, almost like a sheet of paper. We can make it as thin as a sheet of paper. Uh, and the main attribute here is extremely high thermal conductivity, which means it takes the heat away. So in a number of applications I'm going to show you in a minute, that's a great attribute. So, for example, the comparative materials are things like copper and steel. And you can't see me do this, of course, but you compare the weight of this copper and steel to, to, to a similar sized block of graphite. The difference here is about fivefold. This is five times heavier than this, but this is twice as thermally conductive. So, per weight basis, eight to ten times more thermally conductive. So, the question is, which would you prefer in your uh, laptop or your cell phone taking the heat away from the chip, this heavy old copper or this twice as effective four times lighter graphite material? And obviously the answer is graphite. So you can see behind me some of the kind of electronic applications that it finds its way into. Um, a lot of them are electronic thermal management. As you are well aware, everything today is getting lighter weight, higher power, more electronics packed into the same uh, or smaller uh, piece of equipment. Uh, and the problem with all of that is heat being generated by the chips, by the light sources. Even in your light source there on the camera, there's heat being generated. How do you manage that? Take it off your lap, take it away from your ear and so on. 
Well, this graphite material, extremely thermally conductive, takes that heat away. It takes it to somewhere else in the device, but it might take it away from your ear or from the palm of your hand or whatever. So we make these sheets of, natu uh, sheets of graphite material like this that I've shown you, and it'll be laid into something like this la lightweight laptop, just sits in here behind the keyboard, um, sticks onto the chips and whatever other heat sources are in there and just takes the heat out and around. Same thing in plasma display panel TVs like the one behind me, same thing. Every little pixel there is a heat source and if you don't take the heat away you get burn in, you get um, lifetime issues with the plasma display panel TV that graphite takes away. Now, that same facility is making things which are going into things like this Sony laptop, into uh, 3G and 4G cell phones, into plasma display panel TVs, into uh, fuel cells, same technology, a plate here for a fuel cell uh, that then goes into something like this that can power a forklift truck or backup power for a cell phone station, same material. Same place, uh, same facility, that 125-year-old facility. So I think it's a, it is a very interesting story. The facility down there is actually original. If you go down, it's been lovingly preserved and um, repurposed to, today to make this new technology. But same, same site on the corner of West 117th and Madison, 125 years later, is making materials like this today. So I think a great story in terms of what can be done. Uh, we found uh, the Cleveland area to be very rich in collaborative um, synergies. I actually got here in 1999. I have been with the company 28 years, but in other countries, in other locations. And I got here in this position in 1999. And within a year or so, I started to engage in the local community, found Cleveland Engineering Society, found um, Magnet, as uh, camp as it was then called. And we started to... Um, work more and more with the infrastructure that is here. NASA, the universities, Case in particular, has been a strong partner for us. And the more we got involved with them, the more we'd find out about somebody else out there we could talk to. And we have been very active in uh, what today is commonly called open innovation, working with people who can be synergistic with us. We actually call it external interaction. And uh, we actively seek out partners who can help us develop technology faster, quicker, uh, better, you know, build some synergistic partnerships. So we've used things like the Third Frontier Program in the state of Ohio, uh, many of the local institutions and organizations that, that go on to just make connections, talk to people, and found very productive and fruitful synergistic collaborations with those kind of people. Well, since uh, 2003 was about our low point here, and since then in this site in Palmer, Ohio, we have more than doubled since 2003. Uh, so today we're about 210, 220 people. I actually lose count because we're adding two or three people a month at the moment. Um, and then in our Lakewood, Ohio facility, uh, we've had a similar growth story, not quite as, as large. Um, many of the jobs we're adding here in this site in Palmer, Ohio, uh, what, you, what are an, uh, high paid, high skilled, high tech jobs. So marketing directors, uh, CFOs, um, uh, scientists, we've hired a lot of scientists. We've nearly doubled in science num scientist numbers in the last three or four years. So a lot of those kind of people being added because as I mentioned earlier, this is the corporate headquarters and the global R&D center for all those businesses all around the world. So as we've grown and prepared to grow into all these high-tech industries, we've had to add the peoples with the skills that can take us there.